Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have 10 enemies to lovers romance recommendations for you. I have a few hate to love romance recommendations but I have yet to have an enemies to lovers. So in my eyes, hate to love or dislike, animosity to lovers, whatever the case may be, is different than enemies to lovers. Like you have to be true absolute enemies hate you with every fiber of your being for it to be considered an enemies to lovers romance in my eye. So I finally have 10 books that I can put in this category of absolute enemies to lovers. So let's get into these books. First, I have one of my favorite books of the year so far. This is Whispers of the Deep by Emma Hamm. Look how stunning this special edition is. I just always have to show it off. It is beautiful. I'm obsessed with it. Anyway, this is a fantasy romance book where it takes place on a world where like no one can survive above water because there's constantly monsoon, monsoon, storms, rains, like it's not safe to live above water. So these humans that inhabited this planet ended up creating these underwater city domes where they are able to breathe, to live and have these cities. Um, but the natives to the planet are a hero, I think, they're called unguys, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just gonna say mermaids um, for the sake of this video. But his people who are mermaids are natives to this planet and absolutely hate these humans because in order to create these underwater cities and domes, they have to kind of eliminate plant life and life on this on like the ground of the ocean. They're ruining their planet. And so ever since humans have appeared on this planet, these mermaids have done everything to try and get them out of there. They will break down the glass for their domes. They will kill anyone who goes into the water. Like they hate these humans. So a heroine is hired to be kind of like an engineer in this city where she is tasked to fix like cracks and certain like broken items in the city. The beginning of the story starts out with our heroine fixing a crack in one of the um, rooms in the city. And the hero is swimming by and notices it. And he's like, oh my gosh, there's a crack. Let me get to that. Um, and so he breaks it down and tries to kill her tries to kill her, she tries to kill him, like run away from him, but the room is slowly filling up with water because he breaks it down. So he can't really move because there's air in there. She can't really move because there's water getting in. Um, but then something happens, okay, where he ends up kidnapping her, okay? Um, and they hate each other. This is a huge language barrier. They cannot understand each other either. I absolutely love this. These two hate each other. They literally try to kill each other, but they both need each other for certain reasons. So if you have not read this book yet, I need you to right now. Dark City Omega by Elizabeth Stevens is another one. This book is kind of like post-apocalyptic on this fantasy world where there are omegas and alphas and betas and all that jazz. And so our heroine just recently finds out that she's an omega and she's been kicked out of her city. And while she's trying to survive and escape these alphas, one alpha finds her and um, kind of takes her for himself. And she hates him because of this. Like she's like, I don't want to be a piece of meat. I am a person, I deserve to be treated as such, and you're just viewing me as an omega, like as something to be with. I I am more than that. But little does she know this hero knows that they are fated mates and he's trying to like convince her about that, but they like at first hate each other for their own reasons. And the way they fall for each other is very, very, very slow, very slow, but it's a great book. I love the world, I love the lore, I love like, a lot about this book. A few Cressley Cole books have this trope. The first one that I am absolutely obsessed with is Dark Sky. This is book number 14. So um, it starts out when these two characters are children. The hero is this type of magical creature um, who has wings. I don't know the term for it. I haven't read this book in a little bit, um, but he has wings. Anyway, he's not supposed to become friends with our heroine and her sister who are sorceresses um, or sorcerer. Is it sorcerer or sorceresses? I don't know. Anyway, she's a sorceress. Every sorceress is born with a unique magical power. Her power is um, the ability to command people to do things and they have to do it no matter what. So like if she tells someone like, I don't know, pick your nose, they gotta pick their nose, you know? Their friendship is very um, forbidden though. Like they grow up as friends, they sneak off together. And then when they grow up a little bit older, they start to develop like, like little crushes on each other. It's really cute. But then something happens to where the heroes I think people end up finding out about their relationship and like their friendship. And for whatever reason, the heroine commands the hero when he's younger, like, I want you to jump out of this tall window and not fly. And it completely wrecks his wings after that. He has hated her 
ever since. And she has her own reasons for hating him as well. But he has tried for years to track down this woman, years to seek revenge, seek justice for what she did to him. She completely ruined his life. And so it's best friends to enemies to lovers. And oh my gosh, it is delicious. This book is absolutely stunning. And another fantastic one in this series is Wicked Abyss. This is book number 17. Our hero is the ruler of an underworld um, and he has been cursed to look like kind of like your stereotypical Satan with like the red skin, the horns, the tail, the everything. And he's finding himself to be very unattractive. He's like, no woman is gonna want me. This all started because of my fated mate who like made everything horrible, okay? Like his fated mate did some awful things and rejected him and did all this other stuff, but she's gone. Um, but then he ends up finding a woman who looks exactly like her. He's like, this is her. She came back from the dead to torture me. He ends up kidnapping her and putting her in a tower. This is very Hades and Persephone-esque, by the way. Ends up putting her in a tower and is like, um, you're gonna be a prisoner for the rest of your life because you made my life a living hell. I'm gonna make your life a living hell. And she's like, I don't know who you are. He thinks this is like a reincarnation of his fate and mate where she is like, I don't know who you are. I don't know where I am and give me the F out of here. I <laughs> I am not who you think I am. Um, and she is pissed. She's gonna try everything to get out of this tower and they hate each other because he thinks that she's his fate and mate reincarnated and she's like, oh, uh, you kidnapped me. You're torturing me. Like what is going on? So, but I love this one. If you love Hayes and Persephone romances, I need you to pick up this book because you will become absolutely obsessed with it. Another fantasy one is For the Love of the Gods by Rory L. Scott. So this book series weaves like Greek and Roman gods together. So the Greek and Roman gods for the underworld don't like each other. Like they hate each other. Um, that's our heroine and our hero. But the fates have deemed them to be fated mates. And so they have to get married and be together even though they hate each other. I'm not gonna explain why they hate each other because you're trying to figure it out while you, while you read the book. But these two hate each other and they're both rulers of the underworld, which was really cool. But it's interesting being fated mates to someone that you absolutely despise. Another one with characters who absolutely hate each other is Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. Uh, talk about I literally try to kill you many 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 times <laughs> but I fall in love with you instead so this is the first book in her post-apocalyptic series all about the four horsemen of the apocalypse they come one by one to ravage the earth so pestilence is our first one and he's bringing plague like everywhere killing a bunch of humans on earth and the heroine has like okay I'm gonna sacrifice myself I'm gonna try and kill this guy and she does just that she kills him she sets him on fire kills him but then she doesn't know that he can't die he like regenerates he comes back to life and he seeks her out decides to torture her he's like i'm gonna make you pay for what you did to me because you, that was awful dying does not feel good but i'm gonna make you feel awful as well so he basically drags her along with him while he is killing the human race in front of her eyes like spreading plague and sickness around he keeps her alive like he can control like where his sickness plague goes so he keeps her alive and is like, you're gonna watch me kill everybody and know that it's your fault. So man, these two like hate each other. He literally drags her on the back of a horse where like she becomes bloodied and bruised and almost dies multiple times. Like it is wild, but these two, these two fall for each other in spite of all of that. Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin is an interesting one because her heroine in here is a female pirate, female pirate captain, and she actually has two love interests and it's enemies to lovers with both of them. So it's one with her husband because they betray each other in some aspects. And then the other one is with a pirate um, hunter who kidnaps her and keeps her in his cabin and is like torturing her. Um, these two both, hate her and she hates both of them. Anyway, this is a pirate romance. It gave me like a lot of um, Pirates of the Caribbean vibes, which if y'all don't know, is like my favorite movie franchise of all time. I'm obsessed with Pirates of the Caribbean, but this book is really dark. It's one of the darkest books that I've read. There's a lot of trigger warnings for SA, abuse, like probably everything you can think of is in this book. So just please be aware. Um, but this is full of the enemies to lovers trope. Lady Ruthless by Scarlet Sky. This one is really good. It starts out with literally our hero kidnapping our heroine. The hero kidnaps her because he finds out that she is the author to these horrible articles and letters going around the ton about him. So there's these letters called the scandalous sins of Lord Sin or something like that, where it talks about these horrible debauched things that he's done, like slept with husband's wives, killed people, tortured people, like describes all these things that he's done. Um, but he's like, I haven't done any of those things. Like what is going on? And no one will marry him now because he's like ruined because of these letters. He ends up finding out the heroine has been writing them and publishing them. And he's like, Oh, no, no, no. He's like, like so enraged by her. Um, he ends up kidnapping her, 
taking her to one of his estates out in the country. And it's like, okay, you're gonna stay here with me. I'm training you to this bed until you agree to be my wife because like uh, you ruined my life. I can't have a wife because of you. No one will marry me. I need to further on my line. Um, so you're gonna marry me instead as retribution for what you did because you wrote these false things about me. She goes, they're not lies. She is fully convinced that this man is the reason why her brother is dead. And so she absolutely hates him. So there's a lot going on in here. I love this one. I'm obsessed with it. Brutal Pins by Sophie Lark is a mafia one um where they're from rivaling mafia families ada in here um starts out with her crashing callum's family's like birthday party for one of his sisters and she ends up accidentally like setting one of the rooms in the house on fire and um they kind of have at it after that and their respective families want this feud to end so they force the two of them to get married and they hate each other they can't stand each other and literally during the wedding the heroine tries to kill him because she knows that he's allergic to strawberries and she puts on like strawberry lip, lip gloss or eats strawberries before the wedding and so he literally goes into like anaphylactic shock like in front of everyone in the in the church um so she, yeah she literally tries to kill him they hate each other but man there's a fine line between hate and lust Ooh, fine line. My last one is an alien romance. This is Toxic Desire by Robin Lovett. This specific race of aliens, they're like gold skin, right? Are at war with humans, have been for years. And this book starts out with these gold aliens um, commandeering a human spaceship and they're fighting and everything. And so the captain of the humans, this heroine, is fighting with the captain of the aliens. Like they're battling it out. And while they're battling, they end up like fighting in this space pod and the space pod gets released and actually like crashes on the planet that they're like traveling by. And it's a desire planet where there are toxins in the air. And if you're not constantly doing it, like you will be in excruciating pain. And so the two of them have to use each other in order to survive on the planet and try and find their people because the big spaceship ended up crashing on the planet as well. So the two of them are traveling across this toxic planet and uh, they gotta use each other to do it. Even though they absolutely hate each other in their guts, like their people are at war. So I love this. It's such a fun read. It's a hot and fun read. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romances with the true enemies to lovers trope. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the like mad emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.